Hey, folks, welcome to Verified Investing. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at InTheMoneyStocks.com. So I wanted to go over crypto today. I know everyone wants their weekly update video. I'm here to do it for you guys today. My pleasure, of course, to keep you guys appraised of everything I am seeing in the charts, all right? Has anything changed? Is the Bitcoin move still going to go to about 52.5 or so. That's what we're going to look at. And then do we ultimately still see a sell-off to around the 20,000 to 18 level before again, multiple years out, moving to 100,000 and then 500,000, maybe even above. So number one, what I want to do is first check out the charts. We're going to get right into the charts here. And basically what you guys can see here on the charts is my chart of Bitcoin. And again, Bitcoin here, here is your former head and shoulder neckline. This has all along been where I expected it to retrace to. Now notice how the line is upsloping. What that means is you likely will go a little bit higher initially. So again, make sure you're aware of that, that you could go a little bit higher. So you're looking at just underneath 55,000 now as hitting that trend line. Now, again, is anything changing? Has the cycle from 2013 or 2017, is this any different whatsoever? And the answer is no. In fact, the more we have this potential move to 52, 55,000, the more it looks like the previous cycles. And just to kind of show you guys, I want to show you exactly what I mean by that. So let's first take a look at this cycle here. All right, this is that past cycle in 2013. We topped out around 20,000. We then dipped to 11,000. Now, again, notice that was basically a 50% drawdown, give or take. And then we bounced all the way back to 17,000 before moving down to 5,000, actually a little bit below 5,000. So that's number one. So again, basically, if you look at this and match it up precisely, we're right here in the cycle. Right. We're back. We're not back to the 55 potential upside level, 52 to 55 area. We're back to basically 50,000. So you still have a little bit more upside to potentially go before you see this next drawdown here. Next drawdown, notice this pivot low right here, likely movement back to this area right here, and then finally breaking lower. So basically, what that tells you is you'd go back to the 30,000 level. If I flip back to this chart, that tells you you would fall once you get to this area as expected, you would then dip down to this area here around 30,000, you'd consolidate there, eventually breaking down. And again, the chart's telling me you're going to go down here about 18.5 or so, just below 20,000. I'll start accumulating heavily once we get down around that 20,000 level. And I'll continue to accumulate lower to 18. If it goes below 18 to 16 to 14, whatever it is, I will continue to accumulate because ultimately I do believe in cryptocurrency. I believe their place in the future of the world. All right. So now let's look at another chart. Let's take a look at the 2013 cycle high. Here we went to 1250. So $1,250 uh, dollars per Bitcoin. You had a dip down here, ultimately going down to about $500. This almost looks reminiscent of the one we're currently in. The reason I say that is you can see this little pivot low here. We then bounced a little bit. We then came in and we kind of did a double bottom, but pierced it with a tail before rising to 1100. If you go to the, the, um, the chart of Bitcoin here, which is our live chart at the current levels, you can see here, you had this dip here, you then bounced up and then you came down and you went a little bit lower before recovering and trending up. So again, kind of very reminiscent of that, in my opinion. Um, and again, notice how high we went. You know, everyone's so, so shocked. Everyone's telling me, oh, this is a, you know, you're not complete on the cycle to the upside yet. You still have another leg higher coming in. That could be, right? There's always a chance of that. There's always a chance that that could be the cycle. This is just an interim cycle pullback. But my issue with that is this, is that in the previous 2013 and 2017 periods, even prior when it was starting to make a move up, you never had a bigger than 50% drawdown you know, until the cycle topped out and, and the pullback started. And, and that is also problematic for saying that this is this time is different, we're going to go higher, is that you've got an over 50% correction down to 30,000 from 65,000. And again, now we're doing the same exact bounce to the upside. So again, we'll just take it one step at a time here. But ultimately, it does appear to me to be playing out, as I've said, for the longest time. I still remember when it dipped to the 30,000 initially, I called for a bounce back to the scene of the crime, neckline of the head and shoulders. Now, it didn't get there for a long time. Instead, in fact, it still hasn't. But it certainly is a lot closer at this point, only about, you know, we're basically right underneath 50,000. 52.5 to 55 now becomes the target with max upside around 55. 
And again, if you look historically, think about how big the bounces back have been on those previous charts from 2013 and 2017 have been. Um, now, everyone's always you know, asking me, I do these interviews all the time, and they always say, okay, well, how do we know it's different? I mean, what changes here? When do we know that this can be actually a different cycle move than what we're seeing from 2013 and 2017? And the answer is so simple, right? So basically, if you look at those cycles, those previous cycles, what never happened until you bottomed out? All right. And the answer is very simple. You never took out the high. So you never took out 20,000 after 2017 until this recent cycle, right? Um, you never took out the uh, 1200 level in the previous 2013 cycle before it bottomed out at 100 on Bitcoin. So that is a very defined thing. And I always try to impress upon people that, you know, there's so many hodlers out there and, and people that are just uber bullish, which is fine. But for me, it's basically charts, right? I take the emotion, I take it out of the trading situation. And I say, okay, how do we look at the charts objectively and compare them historically? Because historically is always important because basically things re repeat, right? We know it doesn't necessarily repeat exactly, but generally things repeat over and over again, whether it's 2013 and then 2017, we'll see if this one repeats as well. But the point is that you never had it taking out that high pivot of the cycle high in 2013, 2017. So likewise, that would be a one way for me to say, okay, if that did get taken out, then you no longer have a scenario where you should go to 20,000. But until then, I still have to look at the previous drawdowns, which were like 75, 80% drawdowns in Bitcoin. And I still have to be in, in the corner of saying, okay, until this changes, that seems to be what's playing out. All right. Having said that, I want to get into the charts on the NASDAQ 100. Something big happened and I want to kind of follow it up with the S&P. So look at this channel, folks. One of the coolest channels here on the QQQ. Look at how we hit here. We pulled back. We hit here. We pulled back. And look at yesterday. Yesterday, we actually touched that line. More importantly, we put in a very small topping tail, which is a bearish indicator of distribution. And then look at the Qs today. The NASDAQ 100 opened up and it turned lower and is starting to sell off. That is important, all right? So you're getting a topping tail and continuation sell-off. You can actually see an even more dramatic situation on Google here or slash Alphabet. Alphabet had put in a topping tail here, pause day, another topping tail. Two, by the way, two topping tails in three days is very bearish. And look at Google slash Alphabet, what it's doing today down about $30 or about 1%. Now, 1% is not a lot, but again, I do expect this to be a little bit of a corrective move in the NASDAQ 100. Now, last time I did a video last week, we were talking about a very major trend line on the SPY. And I want to show you guys here on the SPY exactly what's going on. And again, if I can get my chart up, that would be fantastic. But bottom line is on the S&P 500 is that you have to look at that same trend line. And what we've seen lately is that the market has made new all-time highs, but at the same time, we have not confirmed back above that line. So for those of you that know the confirmation signal, um, and it's so, so important here. I can't stress this enough. The confirmation signal is of the utmost importance in recognizing true breakdowns versus fake breakdowns. Here's the spiders chart. Take a look at this, guys. So here you confirm. Here's your close below. Here's your confirming candle. Notice how we went back here. We touched the line. We touched the line. We touched the line. Pulled back. Touched the line. Closed above. But had, did it confirm ever above? Closed back on, below, below, never confirming back above. So it's been, this has been a very weird cycle. And one thing you can make from it is that the market still has a lot of smaller investors. I was reading today that the small investors are just piling money in. We're on pace for small investors to put over a trillion dollars into the market this year, which is remarkable. I mean, that is a huge amount. Um, JP Morgan came out today and said, hey, you know, the little investor, basically the Robin Hood investor is what's holding up the market right now. I think, and I tweeted this earlier, and by the way, you can follow me on Twitter at Gareth Soloway, but basically the fact that they're saying that is they're telling you they're not buying. And the fact that we've seen sell-offs, and let me see if I can bring up my chart here um, on an intraday basis. This is important on an intraday basis. So notice how the markets float up early with the small investor buying and then selling, up, floated up, selling, floated up, selling. You see how the, the S&P is falling towards the end of the day? Basically, what the institutions are doing here is allowing the small investor to buy early, and then they're selling into that later in the day, essentially distribution, which is, which is institutional selling into small investor buying. 
I really want to stress this. JP Morgan saying that the small investors, what's keeping this market afloat is them telling you that not only are they not buying, but they are actually net sellers here. Now, honestly, I don't think they've been, they've been able to unload their full positions, but you have to take that into account here, folks, that basically JPM is, is telling you between the lines that they're net sellers and they're not buying the market. The reason why that's important is that the small money can continue to float this market up for a short amount of time. Eventually, small money runs out of money, right? I mean, the person that has 3000 or 5000 or $10,000, you know, at some point you run out of money. You know, this isn't a meme stock that, can, that has a short amount of, amount of shorts in it um, that's small and can be squeezed to the upside. This is the stock market, you know, trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. So please be aware of that. And I can't stress that enough here, how that is telling us something. And the fact that you, again, look at this. This is such a cool chart, right? So this shows you how the market's weakening, all right? Most people would look at this and say, wait, we're basically just off of all-time highs. How is the market weakening? How does it show us in the chart? Well, look at this. Here was your pivot low. Look at how far you were away from this trend line. So this is when the market was the strongest, right? You didn't come back. And look at when it first came back, did it touch the line? Nope. So it was so strong, it didn't even touch the line. It laughed at the line. Then the next move up, it stayed away for a shorter amount of time right here, right? All right, and then it touched the line this time. Then it stayed away for a shorter amount of time, touched it again. Then it stayed about shorter time and pierced the line. See how every time it's a shorter period away from the line and it's also in a situation where each time it's going a little bit below the line or here it didn't touch the line, touched, touched, touched below, then more below, but still never confirming, then confirming. And then look at how it's not able to get above the line this time. All right. That is a weakening in trend. Now the trend is still up. There is no doubt about that. The trend is still up, but that is showing you that things are weakening here. The fact that we still confirm below tells me something is on the horizon. We have the jobs report tomorrow. I doubt we fall big on the jobs report uh, going into a holiday weekend. But what it does tell me is that once we get into September and, and past this holiday, there could be some action here. We've had seven straight up months. Again, I am anticipating a down month here in September when all is said and done. How much? That's the big question, folks. That's the zillion dollar question. All right. Bottom line is, thank you for watching. Come join me at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Look for verified investing alerts. I cover crypto every night in my daily videos. I cover the markets every night, the S&P, the Qs, updates, trading setups, trades that I've taken. I put out live alerts for you guys for swing trades in verified investing alerts. And I do encourage you to come check it out. So you guys have a wonderful day. Again, thanks for watching. Take care.